All right, you're very welcome along this Tuesday morning to another OTBAM. We're here with you until 9.30 and we're picking through the bones of what happened last night as Ireland drew one all, as Owen predicted in studio yesterday. Accurately predicted, Kenny. Is that right? Kenny, good morning to you. How are you? Yeah, morning, lads. Owen Sheehan, good morning to you. How are you? Very well. How are you keeping? You're a bit tired, are you? A bit tired, yeah. Both from predicting, bloody predicting the right <laughs> results time and time again. She's just tired yeah, of it. Yeah, tired of being, tired of being right all the time. Who, every who'd've... day, day in, day out, week in, week out. Who'd have thunk it? One all. You didn't see this coming. <laughs> what's your take? What's your hot take, Kenny? Un, unfinished take at this stage? Seeped in? What? Immediate reaction? 24 yeah, hours it's on. Funny old yeah. reaction hours. after the game. I mean, they were celebrating, obviously. They, uh, they'd qualified. Obviously, our lads were disappointed, but only disappointed in terms of, well, lift a fight another day, that type of thing. I always felt the atmosphere was a bit funny leading up to the game. That kind of traditional last, um, last game of the group, winner bust, winner takes all, this is it, you know, you know, nowhere to go after this, uh, no fallback scenario, it didn't really apply, because you already knew, and actually for quite some time, that the likelihood would be we'd have a playoff play, so that was a strange feeling. I didn't really, didn't, I haven't really enjoyed that, in all honesty, that kind of, that real kind of nervous tension that this is it, you know what I mean, there's, there's no way back after this, we've got to perform tonight, otherwise that's it, we're out. I didn't, you didn't really you, sense that around the game. I know it was there for his automatic qualification if we'd won. Is that because there's a playoff, I think? Well, yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whereas I think the, that League of Nations, when it first started, that seems a long time ago, uh, <laughs> when we were having this League, League of Nations discussion. But I think it's been very good in terms of the competitive nature, uh, uh, the, uh, the games leading into this qualifying campaign. But I think where it's attracted a little bit has been in this respect in terms of, well... Everybody gets yeah, if playoff. we qualify, but yeah, if not... Georgia are in a playoff. Much, yeah, like. and not knowing, not now, I mean, up until a couple of days ago, I was still asking, well, we're definitely, I mean, are we, we're definitely in the playoff. Well, well, well no, it's good, it's good. No one could give me a cast iron saying, yeah, and then in terms of who you're playing, home and away, all this kind of, not confusion, but lack of certainty kind of create a little bit of, I don't know what it was around the game. It was a bit of an odd feeling, really, even after the game. I wasn't devastated, I've got to be honest with you, because I knew... The likelihood is we still got a very good chance here to go on through. Well, two away games to go through. Yeah, but against who? It's not as if we're, we're, you know, we're heading to, to Germany or like one of the top European nations. It looks like it's going to be maybe Slovakia, Bosnia, the way people... Slovakia and the North, potentially. Slovakia and the North, is that what they're saying? That's, yeah. that's flipped now, that's flipped. Depends who you speak to. Yeah, no, so Slovakia, there's definitely people with flights booked to Bratislava already, right. put it that way. People are expecting Wales to beat Hungary tonight, which will kind of take them out of the picture in the playoffs. And I do think it is Bosnia. In the final. It brought it, it brought it in uh, Northern Ireland. Well, like that, in the other like semi. that. I saw the North playing in the other semi um, at one stage. So perhaps the people I've been speaking to have uh, fancied <laughs> Bosnia over Northern Ireland in that, in that semi-final. Uh, either way, it seems that uh, Slovakia is something that's going to be certainly on our radar. Get Wales out of the picture tonight, probably a good thing. I think after James McLean's goal uh, those couple of years ago now at this point, I think they'll be looking for revenge against us. And that'll be in Cardiff, obviously. And I, I just wouldn't fancy that. I think of all the possible... Uh, outcomes at this point, we probably want Wales to qualify automatically, don't we? Yeah, I'm not at that stage. You're looking at the potential. Oh, I hope we don't get them. Um, or really gone past that stage. Like you know what I mean? I really don't care actually, to be honest with you. Just in performance level, air performance levels for me are really going to dictate. I understand what you're saying about Wales, kind of the attack and threat which they uh, possess. Bale, obviously, Ramsey, obviously, uh, Harry Wilson. I'd throw into the equation there as well. He's having a great season down at Barnby playing. Uh, really well and some kind of talented footballers but still not to tell you, they wouldn't frighten me you know I'd, I'd, I'd still back us yes I think you're right it would be probably our tough, one of our toughest opponents but as a playoff for a major championship final like we really shouldn't expect to be kind of you know what I mean tiptoeing away in past the, the weaker nations we're going to have to we're going to have to beat a team of some of some quality you would expect that to guarantee a qualification it's interesting what you say uh, about the atmosphere last night. I certainly felt that in the build-up to it, that there was kind of a sense that there was a safety net. During the game, obviously, there is the sort of growing of emotion, the fact that you can possibly win the game, which obviously gets the place booming, but also that kind of sense of the safety net as well. So, like, I, I don't know which way to look at that, like, to, to look at that uh, in a hugely positive way. We can see, actually, the fans, this is before the game, uh, out near Lansdowne Lane with uh, their flares. So, actually, it wasn't that subdued before the game. I actually completely missed this. This is the first time I've seen this. The atmosphere was good outside. I was, yeah. I was there some time before that. That looks as if close to uh, kick-off now. I was probably there maybe three quarters an hour before that. 
No, it was good energy outside, don't get me wrong. And even inside the stadium, national anthems, that initial couple of minutes from the game started, I felt, you could, you, yeah, you could feel it. It was good energy in the stadium, all right. That dissipated a little bit, I've got to say, first half was very flat. The, uh, the game really lost its intensity of it, like, kind of very quickly, and that kind of leads in maybe to what Owen saying about, obviously, them not having to uh, chase the win, maybe wanting to take a step back, take a pace out of the game. Maybe we weren't maybe as... We were maybe a little bit conservative in, in our approach in terms of maybe just taking a step off and maybe just assessing the situation, not overly committing ourselves, particularly in that first um, period of the game, the first half. So it was a very odd first half, I felt like, you know what I mean? Coming off at half-time, it felt as if almost the game hadn't started uh, after half-time. We certainly got that second half, a bit of intensity, a lot more energy, you know, making a few more tackles and... You know, getting ourselves hard up the uh, uh, the pitch, engaging them a little bit higher. You know, winning back a few turnovers, transitions were better, crowd were up. So I felt we were really in the game second half. Just just a shame, really. It took us that took us that long. I mean, I can understand it. A few of the lads were making the point in the commentary. Well, look, we didn't want to go after them and get picked off because we had done kind of over there, you know, allowing them to kind of play through us. But I'm not sure. I'm not going to quite buy that one to be honest with you. As long as you go after the ball collectively as a unit. You know, the, you're, you're nice and compact and you move up the pitch together. doesn't mean you're not necessarily leaving yourself more exposed offensively if you go collectively higher up the pitch. Yeah. You're only leaving a bit of space in behind your defensive line, but as long as, as long as there's good pressure on the ball, keeper's got a good starting position, you'd like to think that's not a huge threat potentially, the ball in behind either. Yeah. Particularly when you're playing against someone like Cornelius, who's a kind of lovely less. centre forward. But that's obviously getting a little bit bogged down tactically like in the game, but... Uh, we're going to hear a bit from Mick McCarthy here if you want to stick your earphones in there, Kenny. Yeah. So um, here's a taste of Mick McCarthy's post-match comments. Uh, kind of makes disappointed that we're, we've lost that... Yeah, well, well, we've not qualified yet. But, of course, if we're in the playoffs, we're not out of it either. Uh, but immensely proud of the players for the way they performed tonight. and uh, Even more so having gone 1-0 down, which was a poor goal to give away, I thought. Uh, I think Doc will say he's, you know, he's, he's, his man run on him, but uh, he's gone and got the equaliser, so uh, I've got to forgive him slightly. I said I've, I was giving out to him about the goal and forgot to congratulate him about the goal he scored, so I'll go back in there and do that. Uh, so mixed, very disappointed, but very proud of the lads, I thought they were great. Do you now find a way to go in, win a football match or to win two matches in the space of six days? That's the, the challenge. Uh, well, I've got three months to prepare for that. Um, we'll see who we get. I'll, I'll plan for it when we get it, you know. Play the way we played. Play as well as that. Play as well as that against other teams. We can beat them. And I always said the game, if they, if they leave everything on the pitch, they give everything for me, the lads, I'll take that. And I've got to take the results. I'm disappointed with that. But that is the only thing I'm disappointed with the whole evening. So that's the only thing that McCarthy's disappointed about is the result. Keep those in, Kenny, because Damien Delaney was on co-commentary for us and uh, he said that he wants Stephen Kenny to take over straight away in time for that playoff. Have a look. Just to be clear, because it's not an easy thing for you to say if you're saying it publicly, Regime and Josh Cullen and all those players, but are you saying Stephen Kenny? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, 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 and it, 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 it's difficult. I, I don't think you feel good saying that. No, I don't, because I, I like Mick. I really do. I think he's a fantastic fella and all that. But look, we, we, we've tried this way and we've been trying it for a long time. And, and yeah, we've had a little bit of success for it. But look, let's just start the process now. And let's just, let's just go, man. He means let's just go and get Stephen Kenny in now for the playoff. So I didn't hear where uh, Dame is reasoning, to be honest. We just heard the tail end of it. Obviously, we we'll the, we'll the full. More. There's five or six minutes of that. We'll play the full thing a little bit later on, but it's obviously not going to happen, is it? There's no way that they're going to replace Mick McCarthy now, three months out from a playoff. No, but I, I don't. I, I, like I said, I don't think there's a strong argument for replacing Mick. If I was looking at that performance last night, uh, probably similar to maybe the end of maybe Martin's reign, you looked at the players look kind of uh, disillusioned. We look a little bit ill-organised. Kind of lacking a little bit of spirit, kind of cohesion, to repair. all of those things. That's when you sense that this whole thing has fallen apart. The players have lost confidence in the in the manager in terms of what he's asking to do. All of those things, you know, bubble to the surface, and you think, well, it's over. You can almost see it. I mean, there was no hint of that for me in the in the uh, performance last night. I don't think it was the perfect performance. I'd probably disagree slightly <coughs> with Mick. I don't think from start to finish he looked at performance. I thought that's as good as we've got as a team. Like I said, first half for me. 
I was probably a little bit disappointed, I've got to be honest with you. I thought, even in terms of how we wanted to play, again, I'm not sure if Damien is making the point about we can't keep playing this way, but <clears throat> me last night, I, I saw us try and play in a way which traditionally artist teams haven't played. I mean, I saw Dan Randolph get the ball on a number of occasions, goal kicks, centre halves, drop, full backs, and we looked to play uh, possession football like 25, 30 yards from, the, from our own goal, with Denmark putting a bit of a squeeze on us. And I was a little bit nervous watching it, to be honest with you. You know, we kept possession, give it away, didn't give it away too often, but invariably went back to Darren Randolph. He maybe uh, kicked the ball to the halfway line, but we were actually looking to play through the tours and play our way up the pitch. Now, that's not traditionally how Ireland teams have played. Not, certainly not over the last while, anyway. No, I'm, I'm not necessarily a big fan of it. I'm still not convinced we have the, the players to do. I didn't think we did it with any great effect, uh, in all honesty. And, and the couple of moments first half when we had a little bit of joy for me when a couple of times the ball came into Glenn Whelan in midfield. And he had a quick look on his shoulder and he went, woof, round the corner. He clipped a couple of balls into the chair. I'm not talking about aimless balls, just smashing the ball up the pitch. Where there I'm, was somebody running. Yeah, I'm talking about a little bit of eye contact. Dave McGold, not even eye contact sometimes, just his body language suggestion. Lads, this is going first time around the corner. Yeah. Over the, over the left back, into that inside right channel. Dave McGoldrick, Je Jeff Hendrick, get on to that. And a couple of times he did that for us with a bit of joy. Centre half, headed the ball down once. Alan Brown picked up the second ball, which, it, which asked your midfielders to do. Anticipate the second ball getting knocked down, pieces, you know, the second balls. Yeah. He did that and almost got a shot on goal. Yeah. So. OK, we'll, we'll come back to this a little bit later because there's plenty of detail to, to parse through. Right. Um, but I think you felt the performance was mixed. I think, that, I think a lot of people feel that the performance was mixed and we could do with them knowing exactly what our identity is. But we'll come back to this at 8 o'clock. We're going to hear from Gary Breen as well. That's what's coming up. Papers is next. We're going to do uh, Gary Breen and uh, Kenny staying with us, obviously, and we'll get uh, the lads' thoughts after 8 o'clock. We'd like your thoughts as well. You can just use the hashtag OTBAM or you can leave a comment on the uh, YouTube channel in particular. We'll monitor that all morning today and have uh, a chat with you about it. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash off the ball. If you want to watch us this morning, obviously the best place to listen to us is on the Go Loud app or off the ball.com. Uh, forward slash radio and um, yeah so after that sports news with Tom Malone at 8.45 more Ireland talk coming your way at 8.55 this morning and the Mayo Leaks latest there's been another twist in the saga we'll bring you that after 9 o'clock this morning you can tweet us using the hashtag OTBM time for the papers OTB AM so I'm going to start with the Daily Mail the front cover of the Daily Mail GAA stars US brawl shame so what is this about Two All-Ireland winning players have been sent home from a US trip after allegations that one of them filmed the other brawling with a fan <coughs> in the streets of New York. The brawler is a former member of an All-Ireland winning panel while he was recorded by an All-Ireland winner, it's claimed. So uh, there's footage doing the rounds on uh, WhatsApp at the moment, obviously. A team player is believed to have shared the video in a player's WhatsApp group, which was then shared on social media, an informed source said. So I presume that uh, we're going to hear a good bit more about this because the footage is fairly stark. There's two lads brawling, there's skyscrapers in the background, there's um, the sound of uh, cops, and they are definitely uh, cops, it looks like it's in New York. And um, it finishes with uh, a very strong uh, right hook to the chin, which knocks somebody down. So, not good scenes, and you're going to hear a bit more about that. Uh, back of the Daily Mail is down but not out, playoffs beckon for Ireland. So, it will be Bosnia versus Northern Ireland on one side of the draw, and on our side of the draw, it's either it's going to be part of that whole... Wales, Slovakia, if Hungary beat Wales, who knows what happens then? I'm not sure. Could be Bosnia, Wales or Slovakia in semi-final at that point. See you on that one. Uh, give me about two hours here to figure that one out, Kenny. Front page of the Irish Examiner Sports section is drawing little comfort with a picture of Shane Duffy lying on the turf. Defined Ireland effort ends in more Dane pain. And that is pretty much the, uh, the tone from the Irish Examiner this morning. It's, uh, it, it is mixed, really. It, it, I, I think at the start it is kind of agony that it will that they failed to kind of get that winner at the end. Um, but perhaps after the dust settles, the performance will either give people of a positive disposition a lot more hope, or people of a glass half empty disposition a reason to complain that perhaps why didn't we show this earlier in, in the group. So it's, it, there's a multitude of ways you can look at uh, what last night's performance means. The Racing Post are predicting that uh, Wales are going to finish the job tonight against Hungary. Fired up Dragons to finish job. That one kicks off at 7.45. And uh, Harry Winks is now odds on to make the England squad for the Euros. He's been cut from seven to four to four to six. Tab of the morning to you this morning. Possibly tab of the year. Some of the greatest Norse play of all time. Hey. The back of the sun. Incredible. Better explain this to Kenny. He's he's not a, he's not on 
social media, so he's unfamiliar with why horseplay is suddenly. Did somebody not ring up the house? Nor, horseplay. Horseplay. I'm, I'm aware of that term, and obviously the. But it's in the news. On it's in the news at the minute, Kenny. Oh, is it really? Yeah. All oh, right. Uh, th there is. Have you heard of the Koh Samui Cup? Koh Samui. Yeah, it's in Thailand. Yeah, oh yeah, I know, I know the location, but not the competition. No. Well, so it, it's a new competition created uh, this week by some 19-year-olds uh, who were from Blackrock College, who were obviously on holidays. Were they Blackrock? They were. They're all yes. rock boys. Yes. And so, Happy lads, uh, I think I'm my no, way. This is going. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure when it, first time I heard. It, I wasn't sure where it was going, but it, it's relatively innocent. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> you basically, it's a family show, Kenny. Relatively. The, um, the, the Coast of Movie Cup is basically the, the 4x100 medley in the Olympics, except you just got it down a pint. That once you get to the end of the hallowed pool in Coast of Movie and uh, swim back as far as possible, and it, it, it was, by all accounts, some of the greatest horseplay of all time. The voice message finishes with some of the greatest horseplay of all time, and this has gone viral because everybody's laughing at it. They, so it's basically they, a swimming competition on apparently they all a got bit tattoos of drink. as well. I thought you know, I always preferred the more traditional. You used to hear the lads end the season uh, trips uh, back in the day. You head over to Cyprus or a club would pay for a, a week away for the for the players. And the the games there used to involve the old. I know it's on the beach. Obviously, a few uh, drinks, bottles, or whatever. But it used to be the old. Put the thing in the sand and kind of run around put, it. Put your yeah, put your head down on the stick around about forty times and then sprint. To the to the water, so you could actually reach the anybody could reach the water, maybe a 50, 100 yards, and of course you'd be deviating. Very, <laughs> nobody could manage a straight line run. Uh, obviously, there's a scientific reason behind. It, obviously, spinning <laughs> so quickly, like obviously Central sliding force. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, just literally kind of run in a straight line. Wow. Yeah, that was reasonably comical. I must admit, this sounds a little bit more. So you're saying the cost of movie this sounds a little bit straight lace. If you're talking about down in the point, jumping in the pool and, and no, 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 you jump in the pool first. So you you kind of get your bearings. You do one length of the pool, Did down your point, get back, touch the. The pool, and then somebody else goes, and that's hardly like you know, uh, Kenny, mad stuff, is Kenny, it? Allegedly, it was some of the greatest horseplay <laughs> of all time. We just weren't it there. Didn't involved off a top diving board, like diving off the top diving to begin with, or no, any, any, or, no. or literally you drinking literally as you're swimming. diving off the diving board. You literally have to down a point as you jump off the diving board before you hit the water. Yeah, that'd be well, don't knock yeah, that'd be funny, it. wouldn't it? Plastic cup, obviously, plastic cup. Oh, Kenny's right. Maybe. Try harder, basically. That's what he's saying. And the rugby lads have expected more than that. That sounds a bit weak to me. Right, OK. That's uh, that's big. So the... Today's takeaway, we'll do two hours in the football, but today's takeaway is going to be <laughs> Coast Movie Cup a bit weak. Are, are you suggesting that the people who have tattoos the, lad, the, the rugby lads can do better. The rugby lads can do better than that, far better than that. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but that is the headline on the back of the sun, some of the greatest Norse play of all time. Down but not out, then, is the sub-headline. Um, and kind of a fairly dejected-looking Matt Doherty on the ground after that one-all draw. Uh, so they go in the Telegraph. It is Jones' fear over Saracens' crisis. So Eddie Jones thinks that Saracens might try and pull a quick one in the Six Nations and not allow their players play for England, which, you know, would give England an excuse, would certainly be a very interesting uh, player power versus unions thing. This is obviously because Saracens got to look to 35 points and find lots of money because they're cheats. Um, and then this one, major telegraph investigation shows shocking lack of women in the boardroom. And uh, Southgate dreaming of Qatar, manager ready to lead nation into next World Cup. Gareth Southgate going nowhere. What did you think? We haven't had you on since the Raheem Sterling. Did he handle that properly or not? I didn't know. I thought he got it wrong. Did you? Yeah, I thought he got it wrong, to be honest. I'm very surprised that he didn't deal with it <coughs> in-house. I think it would have been impossible maybe for it not to come out. But I think if it had come out or had it been suggested, there'd been some kind of altercation. I think he could have dealt with it very quickly. And by that time, the game probably would have been played. Sterling would have been involved in it. And everything would have moved on very quickly. I always felt it was the case of it was him and the association were desperate to put it out there. They've received a lot of po positive publicity over the past couple of months, particularly Southgate in terms of how he's managed how he's managed uh, the group, this kind of leadership thing which he has in place. And, you know, he's had a huge amount of um, uh, compliments. And, and understandably so, particularly on the, on the, from a footballing point of view, the team's gone well, he's introduced a lot of younger players and the team's getting better, it's growing, that's all good. But uh, it felt to me PR. 
he screamed of PR. We want, we want to put this out there. We want to be seen to be doing this is strong management. This is what strong management's all about in the modern game. And I didn't buy it, basically. I didn't buy it, the fact when he came out and said, all the players are behind me. Absolutely no chance. There's no way every player in that squad was happy to see uh, Raheem Sterling stood, stood down and actually isolate from the group, because that's what he did. I know I'd have been a bit embarrassed if I was Sterling, almost borderline humiliated in terms of what happened. And I'm sure the people behind Sterling, sorry, I'm, I'm not talking for fun here, the people behind Sterling were a bit absolutely fuming. So just to play devil's advocate for a second, right? Sterling had to have some form of punishment for attacking one of his teammates unprovoked? Uh, no. Not particularly. I, 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 you say attack is obviously an altercation. He might have put his hands on Gomez, but... As so, long, the, the, as the, so the allegation is that he scraped his face with his jewellery when he was getting him in a headlock. That's was what that it? I thought yeah, you were going to go on. I no, that's it. Go on. No, so... No, as long as the two players came together, as long as the players come together very quickly, there's acknowledgement, sorry, I, I lost my composure, I apologise for that. That's accepted. It's accepted amongst the players. For me, there's not... I don't, I don't buy this. It's a bit like the Lampard thing which came out last week. Fines, big fines, this is it. Big discipli disciplinary. They and this is the way we're going to show that he's, he's the big dog. But this like. I'm saying, for me, I was really disappointed in that. For me, that was big PR. I mean, you're trying to create a real kind of professional environment where players respect each other, uh, that move the whole thing forward. But at the same time, you're saying, but, but yeah, I respect you, I trust you. But at the same time, if you slightly step out of line through no fault of yours at times, maybe you're going to get hit with a massive fine anyway. I don't, and, and this smacked a little bit of that to me. So, okay, go and putting it out there in the public domain. So I, I didn't buy it. I think it was the wrong thing to do. And I think that's how it kind of panned out. You saw the amount of publicity around it. It kind of just went on and on. Even the goal missed a bit of Bill and stupid thing. But this is what happens. He, he, left, he left himself wide open. And I just felt nobody came out with a huge amount of credit. Gomez and those heads all over the place. Does he not have to protect Gomez a little bit? Like, so no, you don't. He's a professional. He's a, he's, a, he's a man. He's a professional. And like I said, and none of us were there, but I think we generally know what kind of uh, happened. We, we know Sterling uh, was the aggressor. But as long as it's gone very quickly, there's a bit of kind of contrition there. Of, sort of just, sorry, I'm still emotionally. And both the players themselves, as long as both the players themselves were happy with the outcome in terms of shake hands, let's move on. Generally speaking, that's what players uh, are looking for. And I, I don't know how many... I didn't play in any kind of dressing room where there would have been uh, players demanding, going up to South, okay, banging the door saying, you've got to take action against Sterling. That was outrageous, what I saw in there, him getting Gomez, like... Six for four, like a bit like a, like a cruiserweight, but outrageously got him in a headlock. We can't stand for this. You've got to go public on this, Gareth, and make an example of Raheem. Absolutely it was, it was no going to happen. So when he took him out of the game, it was going to, everybody was like, well, why is Raheem starting off playing? So that was where the decision to go public was made essentially on the back of the fact that they were dropping him for the game. Yeah, well, that's, that's my point. So you're saying don't drop him for no, the game? No, don't drop him for the game. It's ridiculous. Like, he's, made, he's made an error. He, he, he stepped out of line. Sit down, speak with him. Speak is he not trying to bully somebody? Is that not, is that not, like, is that not ultimately, I am the superstar in this team and you did something against no, me which wasn't. I didn't for like? No, it wasn't. For me, it was a national. It seemed to be just like, just lost the cool. Lost. Obviously, it was a bit of a... a bit of premeditation because it was a hangover from two days previously. No, I don't think so. Yeah, obviously, emotions were on a little bit high and obviously, there was something said potentially when he came into the room and he's reacted to her. But that's like just human emotion. It happens. As long as like immediately was kind of there was a, there was apologies made, sincerely made, and they were accepted and people should be big enough to move on in a in a kind of professional environment. That that, that happens. You know, you can't let it you can't let it linger. And I don't think it needed this it's okay to go down this particular road. Uh, I don't think the players were demanding it. I'm not buying into that uh, whatsoever. And and I, I think it rebounded on him. All right. Uh, here's the examiner, and it is drawing little comfort. Defiant Ireland effort ends in more Dane pain at Shane Duffy, lying prone on the ground in the aftermath of the game. Uh, is it hard to get back up after after this, where they feel like they played well, they feel like they should have won, they definitely could have won? No, no, I, I don't think so, because I think over the course of the group, to be honest with you, and even last night, I, I actually didn't feel as if we did enough to win that game last night, I've got to be honest. I think we deserved the draw, second half performance was better, the intensity levels were better, we, more like us, an Irish performance second half, and by that I don't mean crash, bang, wallop, just smashing everything. I thought we got the ball into better areas down the side, which is always our strengths, get the ball into wide areas, got our full backs uh, involved a lot more, Ender Stevens and Matt Doherty in particular, got the last 25 minutes, he was great almost controlled the game actually from that right back position. He showed real personality, got on the ball and got us playing down that area of the pitch. Better crosses into the box, 
but probably didn't create a huge amount of goal scoring opportunities. You know, created a lot of kind of havoc in around the Danish penalty box, which is what we needed to do. I'd love to see a bit more of that first half. Look, I said I thought we were a little bit too uh, passive, really, didn't get any sustained pressure on their goal in that first half. But second half was better. I thought we, I thought we played well. The energy was better. Real momentum behind us and got real sustained pressure on the Denmark goal. So that was better, but it wasn't perfect. And I think over the course of the group, there hasn't been too many games. At the end of it, I've come out after the game and thought, oh, real opportunity slipped there. You know, Denmark away, Switzerland home and away. I haven't come out and thought, oh, we're really hard done by there. Yeah. We should have absolutely wiped, wiped the floor of them. So, so we, we got we, we returned the group. The group didn't lie. Yeah, no, 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 no real complaints. I don't think we can feel kind of hard done by in terms of the group as a whole, or, or even off the back of the performance last night. It's interesting though when you think about it that. As Chair mentioned, everybody got a playoff except for Gibraltar. That, uh, like last night, I thought we see it here, best Irish performance in a long time. I think it was definitely the best performance in the group. And maybe you can commend the team for when it really matters putting in their best performance of the group. But I wonder, should there have been more scope for a little bit more ambition? And maybe some people would view that ambition as carelessness earlier in the group. I'm talking about going to Tbilisi, I'm talking about uh, other games in the group, perhaps one of, one of the games against Switzerland, even though they're a top-class side, that there was, this was always going to be the safety net. We've, we've arrived in a position even if Georgia finished above us. You know, it, like, I wonder, can, can we take away the positives from last night in isolation without thinking about what could have been at the same time? Yeah, I think I think you can look. You dissect every uh, performance in terms of <coughs> how we could have improved. Like collectively, I'm sure, make a look at the the tactical setup of the team uh, over the past couple of uh, games. He's kind of he's not chopped and changed. But the the Switzerland game away for me was interesting in terms of when he went from his natural kind of four three three four four two to that three five two. That was an indication for me that Mick was just searching for something a little that he was maybe totally happy in terms of what he'd seen previously. The, the Georgia game it, it led into that, and I agree with Owen. That was an opportunity, maybe Georgia away. Maybe it felt as if that was a game potentially. I'm not saying, that, of course, the lads weren't, weren't trying and, and weren't looking to go and win the game, but even last night, to be honest with you, we played uh, Denmark. Was that six times we've played them now? I've lost count the last uh, couple of years. But that's as bad as I've seen Denmark during yeah. the, those games. That's I've true. been really impressed with them in terms of how they've passed the ball, passed the ball uh, crisply, combination plays been good, movement is very good ahead of the ball. You know, we're kind of really switched on, very cohesive in terms of their passing, uh, their patterns all over the pitch. Last night, 20 minutes in that game, I was thinking... They don't want it. Not that they don't, they look, they look, out of sort, they look really out of sorts. They really did. Ericsson was on the periphery of the game all night. Wide players couldn't get it in, into the game. Like happy just to take the easy pass, went move the ball quickly. So again, he got that sense of last night. Wow, what a what a real! Didn't we did not knock him off the outer stride really uh, last night? They almost allowed us to, to play our way into the game, which eventually we did in that second half and carried the uh, threat for the last half an hour uh, uh, because of it. And almost could have gone on to win the game, but ultimately didn't. The uh, Irish Times this morning, their front cover is Ireland down but not out as fine display fails to earn a victory. And then they have an um, interesting column from Ken this morning, uh, basically making the point here. Uh, Mick approached this team building project the old fashioned way by building from the back and hoping the rest of a team would take shape on that solid foundation. Ireland did finish with the best defensive record in the group. Switzerland and Denmark have been able to score goals against the other teams in the group because they have a plan for what happens when they get the ball. Ireland's plan is to get it to McGoldrick and hope he can lay something off. We are now exploring the outer limits of this approach. No, actually, I totally agree with it. I disagree with that. That's what I'm saying. I, I, if we did, for that first half last night, if Darren Radliff got the ball and we had a squeeze to the halfway line and Darren Radliff was shelling balls into the opposition half the pitch, we were fighting for uh, second balls and playing from there. I could say there's an argument in terms of, ah, oh, we're going back to caveman football. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with it personally, but I could understand it. But you watched the game last night. How many times did Darren Randolph get the ball in his hands, you know, shell for everybody to get up to the halfway line and hit that big kind of 50-yard diag to Dave McGoldrick? I never saw it. I saw it two centre-halves drop deep to receive the ball. Glenn Whelan comes short at the edge of the box receiving, playing little balls out. Uh, around the corner, trying to get a little combination. But last night was the first night we... we've done that, right? The, uh, no, no, across no. the group, we haven't been playing the ball through. I think fields. we have. Done. I think we've been doing a bit of everything, to be honest with you. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, I'd be probably more of an advocate. Again, when I look at those uh, players last night, I'd be more of an advocate saying, well, hold on, lads. 
let's just squeeze it. Let's go and play in the opposition half, half of the pitch. Let's bank ourselves on winning a, a more of those uh, second balls, those percentage balls when they drop. And when they do drop, we're actually winning possession 10 yards inside the opposition half. And let's go and play from there. Because the big problem I saw with us last night was actually getting from the edge of our box into the opposition uh, half of the pitch okay. uh, by, by, play, by playing the type of, that type of combination football. That wasn't easy for us. So for me, there's an argument for saying, not all the time, but certainly mixing our game up. Go long. We've got lads who compete well high up the pitch. We've got lads who scrap uh, all the time for second balls. Uh, we'll know that. We'll win our fair share, and we can go and play from there, and we can play the type of football. We want to see good football. Yeah, so do I, but I want to see it 35 yards from the opposition goal. I don't necessarily want to see it 10 yards outside our penalty box unless we've got the ability to actually play through the press and get ourselves like a little overloads as we travel up the pitch. So that's the kind of interesting uh, discussion for me. So, so that point that was made in the paper, I actually don't agree with it last night. For me, we almost went a little bit too far the opposite way in the first half. I think fundamentally the point is, though, irrespective of how we're trying to do it, we're a team that is designed not to lose games as opposed to win games. We're not trying to go out there and inflict our personality on matches at any stage over the course of this, of this group. We were never the aggressor, even against Georgia in the game. Yeah, against but I don't Gibraltar. think that's a conscious decision, though, Jerry. When you say we're set up to defend, if I'm setting an Ireland team up to defend and I'm playing kind of a, a, a three in midfield, okay, I don't so listen. I don't play Jeff Hendrick and Conor Hurahan. How are we set up to attack? Those three though? midfield players, they're not defensive midfield players. How are we set up to attack? What's our attacking philosophy? We, it's not so much for me. It's more so patterns. How are you going to get the ball? If you win possession, you're a half the pitch. Have Have you got clear pictures in your head how you How you're going to get from ten yards outside your penalty box to ten yards? That's the key for me. Because once we get into those areas, we showed second half, and particularly get the ball into wide areas, we carry a threat in terms of a bit of combination play, crosses into the box, people arriving into the box. You saw it last night. Balls getting hit out, picking up second ball again. Another cross. The, the goal was a great example of that. Matt Dockery putting a cross into the box. People throwing themselves in, they couldn't clear it. Ender Stevens picks up the second phase to the other side, puts it back into the box. Mac Doherty's charging at the back post. Okay, Goal. Well, so we'll come back to this because it, 